Hello, welcome to the Trey Olds Radio Show. Thank you for joining us today. Today my guest is actor Mr. Frank Brennan. Thank you and join us in a minute. Yeah, I just sent you a memo. I just settled down into my office here and uh, yeah, let's uh, we'll have some fun. Absolutely. Okay, Frank, my first question to you is, how did your career begin? How did you become an actor? Well, uh, interesting enough, I started acting in fifth and sixth grade. Uh, almost, well, as those things happen, uh, the teacher the at the school, the grammar school, uh, wanted to put on a play, uh, which they did every year, and I read for it like all the other kids. Uh, and uh, got a significant role. And then the next year, the same thing, the leading role. Uh, So you might say I was introduced to getting up onto a stage and acting uh, at that age. However, interestingly enough, when I left that school, etc., I never thought about acting again. And uh, and I had no ambitions or anything else. So I I guess I'm going to say I got started on my professional path uh, when I was in college. I went to a small liberal arts college in Jersey City, and they had a very good theater program of an excellent director. Actually, he was from uh, Ireland. And uh, to make a long story short, again, by accident there, I had no thought of joining the theater group. But a friend of mine, or a person I became friends with, He approached me and said, had I ever acted because he was doing a one-act play uh, that would be produced in the school. And uh, I said, well, I don't know. I said, I'll read for it if you want me to. And sure enough, I did, and I got the lead. And then he said, you need to join our uh, theater group, which was called the Argus Eyes, you know, 100 Eyes. Mm -hmm. So so I... uh, indeed joined and that's how i began so um and i've been reading up on you sir and and i'm very impressed with what i've been uh, reading and your interviews um the uh, one with richard and it's not singer richard what's his last name richard hurd no the one starts with an s richard uh richard skipper that's it richard skipper i saw your interview and so I'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, uh, so that that's kind of how it started. And so then when I left college, uh, I went into uh, theater immediately into summer stock. I did winter stock. I did tours up in uh, up in New York State, uh, doing various and sundry plays. And it was all stage work. There was no uh, television or movies. I did the the occasional industrial and maybe a commercial that I would just luck into or fall into at that time, but it was mainly uh, doing uh, stage work. So that's uh, that's basically how I began. I think I began like a lot of people who did it in college and then said, hey, yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. Of course, you knew from an early age, and uh, I don't—I don't mean to be interviewing you, but I just found you fascinating. Uh, how young you started, and I commend you for your stick to itiveness and your uh, intelligent approach to uh, what you're doing. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm an actor, interviewer, writer. I started yeah. when I was thirteen, thirteen or fourteen. That's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it's an interesting gig, interesting industry to be in. It's not for everyone, I must say, but if you have the craft and the passion for it, you will succeed well in this industry. You can, and you can indeed. It's uh, like you say, it's a rough industry, but uh, there's a way to go about it that at least gives you the best chance. Uh, I think a lot of actors don't take that path. And that's why a lot of them end up dropping out or whatever or not quite attaining what they wanted to attain. So, but that's an old story, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I'm of a younger generation. I'm 21 now, and if you talk to people my age who want to be in this business, they think, you know, it's an overnight sensation. You'd be a star and that, and it makes a lot of money, and that's not the case. You know, you have to face reality. You know, it's not You're a... You're absolutely right, yeah. You know, it's funny. If I was going to give out a advice to any uh, young actor... It would be get rid of your fantasies and your dreaming. You can keep them, but don't take them too seriously and don't get all caught up in thinking, well, if I do something, then somebody's going to notice me and I'm on my way. Uh, what they forget is that you and I, are we're in the business of acting. They never see it that way. They think it's artsy, craftsy, and that they're going to be, you know, artists instead of being what they should be uh, in a sense treat it as a business and do the kind of business things you need to succeed uh, for example i have seen too many young people with terrible headshots for example and i'll say them where'd you get that oh I, my best friend is she's a real good photographer so she did them for me oh really <laughs> uh you have to do everything professionally. Approach your headshots professionally. Uh, go to classes, study, uh, observe other people. Uh, it's an entire business. Do the kind of things that are required, and they're not glamorous things. I agree, it's not glamorous to think about where am I going to get my next headshots, or, or how should I... And for example, uh, doing your uh, profile or your resume, uh, I've seen too many fudges on these resumes, and I, I can spot them. And I'll say, you know, you have to do a professional resume. Don't say you did something up in up in New England when when you really did it in your grammar school, uh, a particular play, you know. I, I used to tell them there's nothing wrong with putting on a resume, a high school production. If you're a very beginning actor, at least show what you did in high school mm -hmm. and or college, of course. Uh, but make sure it's very clear on that resume that these are college uh, 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 productions. So it's like, you know, it's like anything. It's like preparing to for the law degree or a medical degree. And I don't mean it's to put it up on that level, but to prepare to be successful in anything, you have to have a, a preparedness or a business uh, an outlook so that you can put yourself in the best position to then possibly be seen. And that's you're only going to be seen if you're successful enough to get hired. So that's what I would tell any young person. Don't be dreaming all the time. Do the work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Pursue your dream, but it's be professional because this is a business like any other profession, you know. You, you got that right, and you, you have that, yep. I think you treat it that way, and you're a young guy, so I, I just think you have an excellent future ahead of you, so I, I was quite impressed. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. My My next question is, what do you find is the most challenging part or the most difficult part being an actor? Uh, I think you, uh, I'm going to give you an allusion or allude to image. Uh, it's that you have to, you don't get to go and choose the person you want to dance with. You always have to be chosen. Somebody has to come over to you and ask you to dance. You can't make it happen. Unlike sitting down to write, for example, if I want to write a short story or a novel or whatever, I can just voluntarily go over, pick up my pen or get on my computer, sit down at my desk, blah, blah, blah. You can't do that in acting. Acting, you always have to be... Uh, the, you, you cannot voluntarily go and act you have to be asked. So that's the hard thing about acting is that uh, a lot of what you can do positively uh, can't be done. You can only start to work. You can do all the prep, but you're never going to work until somebody 
cast you in something. So we're always waiting for that somebody to ask us to dance. Mm -hmm. That that's a tough thing about acting for everybody. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this, but I believe it was Henry Fonda that said to another well-known actor, may have been Jimmy Stewart, I don't know, back in the day. Uh, Jimmy Stewart said, hey, that's, that last film of yours, boy, that was uh, terrific. I bet you're happy. And Henry Fonda, the star, said, yeah, but yeah, but where's, I don't know if I'll get hired again. What's, what's my next job? Now, can you believe it? If he could have that <laughs> outlook, it just shows you uh, what a strange profession acting is. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, all about connections and referrals. And, you know, you, someone told me the other day, it was an interview, you know, and uh, he said, it's not the people you know, it's the people who know you, you know. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, another good way of looking at it. You have to have them both. But yeah, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects you can talk about or you've been busy lately? Uh, well, um, no, uh, I I'm, I'm, uh, have not been b uh, busy, but I do have, I just did a, uh, a scene with uh, Colin Firth in a thing called Staircase that's going to be on HBO Max. And uh, that was a fun experience. I got to play a, a, a World War II vet who had a, a meeting where Colin Firth, or Colin Firth's character, right, is uh, trying to be elected for something, and he's having a debate. I go there, and I interrupt the whole proceedings by saying that he claimed he was in Vietnam and got a, a gold uh, or a... Uh, uh, a gold medal, not a gold medal, a medal of honor in in uh, Vietnam, and he and he never did. And the World War Two vet is screaming this out, and the whole audience is hearing it, and and this, uh, and went from there. So it was a lot of fun, and uh, working with Colin was a pleasure. He's a delightful man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a, a, a bunch of your work. You were in a Medea movie with Tyler Perry, and then you did a oh, film. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I also did a couple down your way. Uh, Looper mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I spent about almost five months in New Orleans uh, doing those projects. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Looper. That was a great uh, performance, you know. Yeah. Oh, I thank you so much. Yeah, it was a pleasure working with uh, um, uh, Paul Dano. What a delightful guy he is. Mm -hmm. What very, was very very nice guy. What was it work liking with uh, working with Tyler Perry for the Medea uh, film? Well, he and I uh, we got along quite well. You know, he can be prickly, but uh, he also can be quite generous. And I've worked with him on three different shows. Uh, in the movie, the Medea's Witness Protection, which that was a lot of fun. My scenes were right with him. And we had a lot of fun doing it because he kept wanting to do it differently because he's had a lot of fun. Uh, he, he, I was a banker. He's coming to me asking for a loan. And, of course, I'm giving him a very hard time. Or her. I'm giving her, <laughs> Medea, a very hard time. Uh, but I also uh, was in... Uh, to have and have not, mm -hmm. uh, or the haves and the have nots, I should say, on uh, his television show. And that was interesting. That wasn't so much comedy, as, and I was playing a psychiatrist in that one. Uh, and then in uh, the uh, earlier uh, property that he had, uh, his uh, earlier show, uh, I was also in that, uh, the... Uh, House of Pain, if you ever heard of that one. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was also on that. So yeah, I've worked with Tyler uh, several times now, and, uh, and we get along quite well. And uh, talk about a successful guy. Here's a guy that used to sleep in his car. He came to Atlanta and had to sleep in his car. He had nowhere to, to to live. He was that poor, and he stuck to it. And look at him now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and that goes to show, you know, if you have a dream and pursue it reasonably, you know, you will succeed. 
you know. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he does a lot of good things for people now. That now that he's wealthy, he, he he parts with a lot of his wealth in good causes. So I was glad to see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's a big man. I don't know if you ever met him, but he's six foot six or six foot seven. He's huge. <laughs> yeah. My last question to you is, sure. and, and I know we talked a little bit about it, but what are your words of wisdom? What is your advice to people who want to be an actor? Uh, well, think think long and hard about it because it's <laughs> uh, the failure rate is tremendous. But if you... If you have a dream and you have a real feeling that this is what you want to do, then I would just say, uh, and I think you've alluded to it in in, uh, the uh, interview I saw that you did with Richard, uh, I noticed uh, that you have a stick-to-itiveness about you. And that's what I would advise anyone. Uh, You're going to get hit in the head. And you're going to get hit head and again. And now somebody's going to hit you in the nose. And you're going to get somebody stepped on. But you, you can't quit. But if, if you stick to it and you've done your preparation and you're treating it like a business, you have an, a, a, a decent chance. Well, let's put it this way. You have a better chance than many of actually having a career in acting. Yeah. Yeah, and another thing, it goes back to my other question, you know, about the challenging part, you know, when it comes to auditions, don't take rejection personally, you know, it's nothing personal, it's the business, and you have you're, to you're have right. a thick, yeah, you have to have a thick skin and persistence, persistence and uh, perseverance, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, you're absolutely correct, no question about it. Mm. But, you know, it's an interesting business, and uh, every day you go to work, it's something different, and that's the fun of it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Frank, thank you so much for letting me talk to you. It's been a pleasure, and I'm glad we were able to do this. This has been fun, and uh, thank you so much. Well, I appreciate your having interest in me, and I've enjoyed speaking with you, and all the best of the luck in your career, too. Well, thank you. Same to you, and uh, you have a great day. You too. Take care, my friend. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. And that was actor Mr. Frank Brennan. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, join us next time, and as always, God bless.